Hey guys, Ray F here. Today I have my brother's Ipo Maker EP84 here on my super scuff table to fix up the rattly stabilizers because I did a pretty bad job the first time round. I was extremely new to the keyboard scene and I, I screwed it up. I never took it apart and looped the spacebar stabilizers because there was foam blocking it. I looped the other stabilizers properly but they weren't that good of a job anyways. Why didn't I disassemble it on first try you ask? You're going to find out why. I always have a sinking suspicion that the EP84 is a rebranded Kiku KC84, so I guess it's about time to see if that is true. Before I continue this video, I want to say something. No, it's not a sponsor. I just want to say thank you all so much for watching my videos, especially that Andadasi video that I first posted slightly more than a month ago. It really, really means a lot to me. I really mean it. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Okay, back to the video. The EP84 is a 75% steel plated tray mount keyboard with a north facing PCB. Just like most contemporary mechanical keyboards, this one has a USB C port. My bro's keyboard had its stock Gateron Browns swapped for Echo CS Lavender Purples. These are pretty good with medium tactile bump and they are quite smooth even in a looped form. If you're coming from typical brown switches, these will be a treat for all of you. This is how they sound. The keycaps are PBT die sub clones of the GMK Strikers, which are okayish I guess. The die sub legends aren't the clearest, and the colors are not that vibrant, but hey, it's good enough for the price. Here's a quick sound test of the keyboard. As you can hear, the stabilizers are rattly, and they really really need better lubing. The stock stabilizers are tight and have very little wobble. Wait, what is that? Is there masking tape there? The stabilizers? Uh, that's for another video, just ignore that for me will ya? Yeah? Eh? We are going to take the keyboard apart. First, let's remove the keycaps as usual. Taking out definitely is a straightforward process with a wire keycap puller. Try not to use those cursed plastic ones unless you have a liking for scratched up keycaps. Post editing right here. I really shot myself in the foot by not arranging the keycaps properly after taking them out man. Oh god. After it's done, I'm going to take out the switches by slamming my head on the keyboard and it's done. The power of lavender purples really looks very tasty. It's like forbidden grapes. Because they're not grapes. Uh -huh. If you open the EP84, there are 8 claps on the top frame holding the bottom frame that you need a thin yet strong object to open, like a pry tool. It is easier to open the keyboard by prying open the top clasp first and then lifting it up. Sidetracking here, we can see that this keyboard seems to be a KC84 by Kiku. Mystery solved I guess. Now all you have to do is to use a wire cutter to twist and pull out these metal pegs that are holding the plate and the PCB together. Some of the pegs are very near the hot swap sockets so I had to be very careful when twisting the pegs out. Once they are taken out, you have to cut the pegs from the steel plate right off. One easy way is to twist them in a very big motion. Afterwards, I took out the stabilizers and I wiped them clean with a paper towel. Next up, we'll be lubing the stabilizers. For this, I decided to go with Permatex 22058 dielectric grease for the wires and the classic Crytox 205 grade 0 for the stem and housings. My method for lubing the stabilizers are similar to how Teha Types did it because I learned lubing stabilizers from his video. Check out his video if you really really want to learn how to lube stabilizers properly. Please don't follow me, I'm an idiot. For me, I dab my brush lightly and I brush them on each side of the housing once and then I brush the top and bottom sides. Afterwards, I spread the loop on the left and right side evenly. I also loop the four corners on the top part of the housing as well. To loop the stem, I brush them three times on each side and then spread the loop evenly across all four sides.
for the wires, I dip the wire in dielectric grease. Afterwards, I spread the loop across evenly until the bend of the stabilizer wire. Once looped, I can start putting back the stabilizers to test them out. Hey wait, I forgot the stabilizers. Okay, let's try that again. Once looped, I can start putting back the stabilizers to test them out. It sounds okay I guess, but way better than it was before. The right side was slightly mushy, which was a mistake on my part. But pressing down the space bar in the center has no mushy feeling, so I guess that's, that counts as a win I guess. I'm going to slam my head again to put back all the switches and the keycaps and here it's done. Overall I did justice on the stabilizers and please cut off the legs, I mean the pegs on the plate when you first get your EPA84 if you're into modding. Otherwise, if you don't bother, you don't care about it, just, just leave it as it is. Get some foam, put it in the case and you're good to go. Here's a sound test on the stabilizers after lubing properly. Thank you guys for watching and be sure to subscribe for more content like this. I have new parts coming from AliExpress and I really really can't wait to share it with you guys. Take care and remember to always loop your stabilizers. Bye bye.